the ultimate factor about Pakistan is that it is a nuclear weapon state. It's the fastest growing nuclear weapon state in the world. They're, they're, they're producing more fissile material. They're building more bombs than anybody else, including the Chinese. While we're coming down and the Russians are coming down, the Indians, the Indians and the Russia, Indians and the British, the French are stagnant. Pakistanis are going up. So that would be like saying Nigeria without oil, an unstable state without any natural asset. And that's what Pakistan is becoming, a Nigeria without oil, a very unstable country, but it doesn't have any natural resources, but it does have nuclear weapons. Pakistan and North Korea are too nuclear to fail. That is, the international community does not want to see it fail uh, because we're not sure what, what a failed Pakistan, a failed nuclear Pakistan would look like. Pakistan has been the epicenter of international terrorism. Some of this has been directed against Pakistan, and the Pakistanis legitimately compl compl point out that they're the victims of terrorism, but a lot of it has been based in Pakistan. That is, Pakistan's been a haven for terrorist tourists. They go to Pakistan, they get trained in Pakistan, they go off to Europe, they go off to, to Britain, they come here, they go off to China, where the Chinese are upset about this. And of course, Pakistan has consciously directed terrorism against India. Our problem is that the U.S. government itself sort of disorganized to deal with Pakistan and with all of South Asia. Uh, the Department of Defense has several Pakistan policies. The State Department has at least two Pakistan policies. I don't think the White House has any Pakistan policy except an Afghan policy. So I think we're, we're incoherent when it comes to Pakistan. And Pakistanis understand that. They look at us and they see confusion and disorder among the Americans. So they play us for what they can do. You know, they manipulate Americans against each other, which has always been their strategy. But I think this has to come to an end because Pakistan is too critical to be sort of put in, put in the back, back, you know, backyard of our, our policies. It really has to be more seriously addressed. The, the issues that Pakistan are concerned about are its economic development and its nuclear weapons program. When the, when the Bush administration opened up a nuclear deal with India, I supported that. But I said, we should also have a nuclear deal for Pakistan, and they rejected that idea. Uh, so the Pakistanis believe, all Pakistanis believe, that we're out to get their nuclear weapons, weapons, and we don't regard their nuclear weapons as legitimate. Now, Pakistan, like Israel, or more, than, more than India, really needs nuclear weapons to defend itself. It's a paranoid state with real enemies. So the, by delegitimizing their nuclear weapons program, we, we've denied them the one instrument of power which they think is legitimate and important. So we should, in a sense, have a nuclear deal with Pakistan, not the same as the Indian one, but a criteria-based agreement which would hold them responsible for the, the safety and security of their nuclear weapons and, and try to bring them into some kind of no, international negotiations about the numbers of nuclear weapons. The second aspect is economics. Um, right after 9-11, I was approached, as a lot of Americans were approached by Pakistanis, saying, we don't want aid, we want trade. We want to sell you our goods. Well, Congress did, wouldn't go along with that, and the Bush administration apparently made little effort to do it. So we've been giving Pakistan a lot of aid, much of which is ineffective, instead of allowing them to sell our, their goods to us. Now, this may be changing because of international tariff regimes, but the pocket, from the Pakistani point of view, the thing they wanted to do was to sell their products here. We denied them that ability.